If you've done some readings on a practical experience requirements or PER, or you've submitted some PER reports, you've found that the process is just a nightmare. There's very few documentation, you spend hours writing up those reports, and when you do submit it, it usually gets rejected by the reviewers. By the end of this video, you're going to learn 7 effective strategies that will make the process much easier. And make sure to watch until the end because I have a bonus strategy that will make your life in PER less of a nightmare. This video is geared more towards the EVR route, but even if you're under the PPR route, you'll still benefit from this video. Very quick basics. There are YouTube videos published by CPA Canon that explain the process. The summary of it is that as part of your requirements to become a CPA, you have to have 30 months of qualifying work experience and complete experience reports. These are very detailed reports that you have to submit at set frequencies and you have to get a supervisor and a mentor to sign it off. Your supervisor does not have to be a CPA, but your mentor must be a CPA. You have two routes, the experience verification route and a pre-approved program route. Strategy number one, use the acronym CARL. CARL stands for Challenge, Action, Results and Lesson Learned. When writing your experience reports, don't put random paragraphs of things that happened. Instead, put the CARL template and fill in each of the letters. What is the challenge that you faced? What exact steps did you take to resolve it? What was the end result? And what lessons did you learn from the experience? The CURL format applies more to the enabling competencies, where you can write about the challenges you face related to conflict, teamwork, problem solving, and so on. Use the word CPA way a lot. The CPA way is the backbone of the entire program, and it doesn't end with the CFE. Writing PER is like writing cases. So don't make up your own format. Instead, put the CURL format, and at the A step, put the sentence, to resolve the challenge, I follow the CPA way, then put each of the CPA way steps down and fill in the details. Use the question marks. When you're at the PER tool, called PERT, you'll see question marks. And when you click on them, it's going to give you guidance on whether this applies to you and what to fill. I recommend going through the entire PERT, copying these guiding comments and saving them somewhere for a quick reference. Which leads me to the next strategy, write your experience in marks of Word. The PERT is kind of nice and all, and it has been updated recently, but the writing space is so little that you can barely see what you wrote. Now you can expand it by dragging it from the bottom, but I've had reports from students that their writing just disappeared and no one knew what happened. You don't want this to happen to you. So create a Word file and type your experience there, then copy to the PERT and submit it. Remember to start with the CARL outline and filling in the details as you go. Here's another related strategy. Keep a tracker at work. Since you have to write about all the challenges that you face and how you approach them, it's really important that you keep track of those challenges. The funny thing is that when you have a situation at work, you're too focused on solving it and you forget to debrief. Create an Excel file and write your successes and challenges, what actions you took and the end results. Divide it into three columns. The first is challenges or success, then the next is details and then the date. This also comes in handy when you're doing performance reviews at work. When your boss asks you why you should get a bonus or a promotion, you'll have concrete examples to bring up. Now, assuming you haven't been keeping track of what happened at work like most people don't, and you're drawing a blank when you're doing your PERT, you can go to your Outlook, click on the sent mails, and go through all the emails. Most of them will be regular communication, but you'll probably come across a couple of cool projects that you worked on that you've completely forgotten about. You can put those examples in PER. Get your employer to become a pre-approved training office. Here's an interesting fact that pretty much nobody knows about. You don't have to work for public practice to be under the PPR route. Any company, be it manufacturing, retail, software, can become a pre-approved training office. And you guessed it, if you're a pre-approved training office, none of the technical requirements will be required for you anymore. This will cut out at least 70% of the PER workload. You just have to fill out the easy enabling competency questions and you'll get your PER done. If you look at the bylaws and regulations of your CPA provincial body, for example, I have the CPA, BC, and CPA Ontario here, you'll see that it says that any office can qualify to become one. The funny thing is that there's so much discussion going on on Reddit about PEP and CFE, like what electives to pick and what your CFE day two role should be, but no one really talks about PER and what company you should work for to get into the PPR route. There are two takeaways here. First, try to get the company you're working for right now to convert to a PPR training office. This is a list of questions that the employer has to answer during the application. If you think your company missed those questions, go to your boss, get them to fill out this application form, send it to your original office, and you're going to get a letter like this one that confirms you're a PPR office. This means your PER will be converted from EVR to PPR and you won't have to do technical requirements anymore. A big, big warning though, once you make this change, the PER team is going to review your EVR work experience and possibly recognize some of it to PPR. Most of the time, they will not, and you will have to forfeit your prior EVR work experience. 
This means that if you're one and a half years into your EVR and your company makes this change, you're gonna go back to zero and start your 30 months of work experience under PPR all over again. So this works best if you're just starting out in your CPA program and you haven't reported any requirements under EVR. If you're itching to get your CPA and your deadline is looming though, this is probably not your best strategy. This leads me to the second takeaway, consider changing your companies. If you're stuck at a dead-end job and you're not hitting those level one and level twos and your supervisor is not really supporting you, you have to do something about it. Most people think that this means that you have to go to public practice. And going from industry to public practice means a huge pay cut. But as I said, any company can be under PPR. Now instead of going door to door and asking every company what CPA route they're under, just open up Google, type a provincial CPA body name, and the words pre-approved office. You'll get a list of all offices that are under PPR route. Throw the list to Excel and filter out all LP and associate companies, which are all public practice companies. For example, here in Vancouver, we have lots of companies that you can apply for and get into the PPR route without switching to public practice. During the hiring process, just make sure you're under PPR route and that you'll get your requirements satisfied. This again works best if you're just starting out on your experience report because you're going to forfeit all your prior EVR experience and you're going to start at zero again. If you're two or two and a half years into your EVR experience, then this strategy will not work for you. Write a lot. I couldn't think of another way to put this. You have to write a lot. Aim to write at least one full page for each example and don't spare the details. Too often I see students writing a quick half page example and they think they can get away with it, but it doesn't work this way. We need a full page, three to four detailed examples of everything you've done related to the experience. Don't spare the details. You need to story tell and paint a picture in the reader's head of what is going on. Write what your role is, how you got to this problem, what accounting software your company is using, who are the stakeholders, how did you approach it, and so on. A full EVR experience report should be at least 20 pages long, and since you're gonna make the revisions and submit multiple times, be prepared to write at least 60 to 80 pages in total. The entire per process will take you anywhere from 40 to 80 hours of writing time. All right, and here's the bonus strategy, get per coaching. I'm excited to announce that I'm working on a per coaching program. It's Canada's first and only comprehensive course that will help you get your per requirements met and get experience report marking services. The course will include video lessons, templates, sample passing per reports, marking of your per reports, and much, much more. I'm working on this course at the moment. If you'd like to get notified when it's available, I'll leave the link for you in the description. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you next time.